This is a small series of videos covering crowds in Houdini. In this video that you're watching right now, which is the first video in this series, I'll start off by preparing a 3D animated character and convert it into a crowd agent. I'll be using one of Houdini's built-in ready-to-go animated characters in this tutorial, so everyone that has Houdini installed on their PC should be able to follow along without much issues. The next video will be finishing off the crowd simulation by completing the .NET setup and .IO imports. The last two videos will discuss on how to control the paths of the agents in the crowd simulation and demonstrate how particle nodes and the crowd solver are compatible. In the last video, I talk about how to control the agents by providing a specific walk path for them to follow. Houdini comes with pre-made motion captured animations that we can use right out of the box. So this is perfect for those that are just testing out crowds in Houdini or if you're like making tutorials like me. These pre-made animations are just perfect. So if you come over here onto the shelf tool, there's a characters tab. And here you'll see moped, uh, mocap, biped 1, mocap biped 2, and 3. So these are pre-made uh, character rigs with animations attached to them. So I'm just going to choose this one. So then I'll throw this guy on here. You come over here and there's this uh, animation. You can choose a walk, run, wait, standing. So let's... Uh, I'm going to turn on real-time uh, playback so it doesn't play. It, it plays in real-time. So there's the standing one, the running one. So these are decent uh, pre-made, ready-to-go animations right off the bat. I'll be using the walk animation for this crowd scene. So this video is an introduction to crowds in Houdini. So I'm only going over the basics for crowds. And I'm not going over ragdolls, and I'm not going to set up collision layers, both of which these are probably the more interesting features of crowds. That will probably be for a future video. Uh, let's just get the foundations and I'll build upon this video for uh, future videos. Now that we have our animation in the scene, remember to check in place animation simply because the crowd solver will be controlling where this character moves. So we want the animation to be in place. So when the crowd solver moves this character, it'll look like he's walking over the terrain. Now uh, that we have all that set up, we need to convert this mocap node into an agent using the agent node. Let's create a geometry node. We're going to call this agent. Drop down an agent node. So you can give this agent a name. I'll just call it walking agent. Now we need to uh, choose our character rate. So let's come here, go to our mocap. Uh, we just need to choose the top level so we don't have to choose anything uh, that is expanded down here just choose the top level of the mocap of the character rig which is uh, labeled mocap here so this will bring in the agent now there's something you need to know about this now let's go back up here choose this which is our original motion capture animation that houdini provides us now this has a lot of points, as you can see here. That's because this geometry is co consisting of a lot of uh, primitives. There's a lot of points in here. But if you noticed uh, over here in the agent, when we come over here, when we drop down the agent, where we bring in that motion capture animation, we only have one point now. So there's that one point that represents this whole thing. This node will convert the mocap geometry into packed primitives. So this is optimized for cooking in the crowd solver. Optimizing the geometry is very important before we start instancing and making copies of this agent to get a crowd of agents or an army of agents in our scene. Since there's going to be such a large number of characters in the scene, this packing step is where Houdini throws in their special sauce to make the simulations run so fast. Now we need to drop down an agent clip node. So just agent clip. 
and what this node does, it will allow us to attach additional animations to our rigged character. But since we already have an animation um, that comes with this character, we really don't need that. But what this agent clip node can also do is that it'll fix all the transformations for our character um, so that everything within the agent is dealing with local transformations. So this is important for the crowd solver when uh, the crowd solver is in charge of moving these our characters, our agents all over the place, it needs to have a set transformation and needs to use the local transformation of each agent. Otherwise, if it uses the world space, it, it'll get it, the pivot points will be all over the place and they're just not going to go in the right direction. So this will become more apparent when why it's necessary after we start uh, after we have the crowd simulation running. Okay, so let's set the clip to the walk. Uh, which uh, which is the only one we have here because that's the only one I'm going to be using in this uh, in this tutorial. I'm just going to give it a name, uh, the clip a name. I'm just going to call it walking. And as for the character rig, let's just select our mocap biped. So remember to select the top level object. Let's give it a test. Oh, it's jogging. Let me go back up here. I might have switched this to right. Okay, let's switch it back to walk. Reload. Okay. So whenever you switch this back and forth, so say I go from walk and I want to go to the zombie. Let's come over to the agent. Let's come over here. Now, if we play it, it's still stuck on the walk animation. So you have to come over to the agent uh, node, scroll down here. So it's originally up here. Scroll down. There's a reload button. Click this and it'll update. Uh, it'll update the node with the correct animation. So let's uh, put, I want the walk. So I want the walk cycle. So let's come back here, select this, reload, come here, the agent clip. Okay, so we have the walk animation. And I'm gonna throw down a null. So it's easier to find later on because we're gonna have to feed this into the crowd solver, uh, in, into the crowd source. So after we have all that set up, we're now going to be moving on to populating a terrain full of agents. And we'll need to use the crowdsource node for that. But first we need a terrain. So I'm just going to create a quick grid. Uh, let's bring in that guy so we know how big we're going to we're dealing with. Let's do Let's make this 3 times as big. It's not Okay, I think that's a good amount. Always a good idea to put down a null. Name this ground. Now let's put down another geometry. So this is where we're going to start sourcing it. So let's uh, uncheck this so we don't want to render this. Because we're going to be copying this agent all over the terrain. So we don't want to render the original copy. Now let's bring in our agent with the object merge node. So let's call him here, agents, I mean agent, and then expand it out. So we're going to bring in the agent in here and remember to put, choose into this object. So this will guarantee the transformations to be exactly what it was before, like exactly this transformation. It won't do anything funny with it. Now let's bring in our terrain as well. So we need a, another object merge. Let's bring in the terrain which is simply just a grid. So it's the ground out into this object. Just uh, it, It's a good habit to just always choose this. I, I think this should just be the default. Okay, so crowd source. So we need this. Okay, we can start copying this agent onto this terrain. And we'll need the crowd source node to do that. If you've seen some of my other videos like the flip simulation and RBD simulation, I hope you'll start to see a pattern with how Houdini preps simulation objects. So in flip sims, we have a flip source to feed in an initial body of water to find the body, like the basic volume, and you feed that into a flip source in order to convert that volume or that geometry into uh, flip particles. I hope you're going to start to see a pattern of the workflow in Houdini. The same thing with crowds. So there's a crowd source 
So we're going to feed in our agents and then the terrain and what the crowdsource will do, it will prep the geometry for the crowd solver. So the crowd solver can have an easier time to start the simulation. It can just start it right away. It'll have everything prepared for it. It's sort of like initializing your properties at the beginning. So there's two inputs to the crowdsource here on the first input, you put your agents. The second one is the custom surface. So that's, that'll be our terrain. That'll be our ground. So let's hook this up. So this is our agents, put it here and let's stick the ground over to the right, to the second input. So already we can see that this grid is filled with, I'm just going to enlarge this. Maybe I'll just make the background black. So what this node does, it automatically populates the agents all over the terrain or populates them over the surface of a certain geometry, which in our case is a grid. You can actually use other types of geometry, like a sphere, even a height field, but you had to convert the height field to uh, a polygon geometry first because height fields are in volumes, but th that's, uh, I could do that in a different video, but let's keep it simple for now. Sorry. Now we can adjust how many agents we want uh, to be to populate over this terrain. If you come over to the crowdsource, it'll ask us number of agents. Now we have 20 right now. So what happens if I put 200? Now there's a lot more here. Now let's say if we want the agents to populate it mainly in the middle. So what we can do is come over to this. Now we might, our terrain here, we can actually paint the density into this. We need more resolution for the grid. It doesn't have enough polygons, so we'll use a subdivide node to increase its resolution because this isn't high resolution enough to hold the paint. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to put down a subdivide, but I don't want it to change. Put down a subdivide, uh, subdivided a couple times. If you are subdividing like a cube, you need to be aware that uh, the subdivide will start smoothing it. So the cube so we have a cube here and we go subdivide it'll start it, it turns into a, a sphere simply because it's subdividing and smoothing it if you want to keep the shape of it come over to the subdivide down here um i believe it was open subdiv by linear yeah this this is actually someone mentioned this in the comments and i, I didn't know this before so thank you so that comes in really handy but uh, I'm using a grid, so I don't really need that right now. So let's put the grid back in. We can st finally start painting the density onto our grid. So say we want to populate uh, the agents so that they're focused in the middle and not scattered all over the place, all over the grid. What we can do is use paint density. So over here in the shelf tool, uh, we can come over here to the crowds. I'll demonstrate how to paint the density using nodes instead of the shelf tool in just a bit. I'm going to show you both ways, node by node and the shelf tool way. You can decide which method you like the best. If you go to the crowd shelf tool here and make sure you have this, the render uh, set on this crowdsource. Sometimes it doesn't really matter. I don't know how it actually detects it, but um, as long as you have a crowdsource node in here, in this object node, in this object geometry node, come back up here, select this node, come to the crowd shelf tool, select paint density. It'll automatically create these two nodes for you. And what you can do is come over here to the paint density. You'll see that you're ready to go. You can, you can start painting. Now, if you, if you select this and you go like, hey, I, I don't have that circle thing. I don't have my paintbrush. Select this paint density node, move the mouse over here. It has to hover over the 3D viewport. Now that's very important. And then press enter. Then y you'll get this widget so you can start painting. So you can start seeing like, this is pretty cool. This is like real time. So <laughs> they're all bunched up in the middle now. So you can have fun with that. Now let's see how we can do this without the shelf tool. So let's going to delete that. You can also drop down a paint attribute. So, uh, the paint color node, which was what was created by the shelf tool. Now that node is actually deprecated. So this is the new one. I'm guessing the shelf tool is pretty old, but okay. This is the new one. This is exactly the same thing as 
um, what was created with the shelf tool. So select this uh, attribute paint node that we've dropped down, come to the attributes over here, and instead of attribute name being mass, let's name it density. So that's what this crowdsource is looking for. After that, select this node, move the mouse over here, press. Uh, if you already have the widget like this, this is what you need. So you can start painting it right away. So if you don't have it, say you come over here and it's like, I, I don't have my paintbrush, press enter. Okay, there you go. Start painting. So this will populate the terrain. The crowdsource will populate the terrain based on the density that you paint on onto the, the grid. So let's take a look what that looks like. So this is what we painted. Now let's, let's make this bigger. Click this. Click and this is what we painted. So it's much better to have this live, to have the render flag put on to the crowdsource and then select this and paint live. So that way you can actually see the ages being populated live. Reset changes, so I want to do this all over. This way I can see this. Now it's going to take a while though. So if you do have a slow computer, this might not be the best way. Because you can see it's slowing down. If you do have a slow computer, paint first. Put the render flag here on the paint attribute. Paint first. And then come over here. And then here. Now it starts cooking and there you go. So separate it into two steps. Okay, let's put down a null. Name this out. I would call it crowd source. So this is uh, where our agents are sourcing from. So far, we only covered the preparation for a crowd agent and explained some of the clip names and how to populate a terrain with a crowd source. Please check out the next video where I set up a simple crowd simulation using the agents that are prepared in this video.